the Vibe Nation. It's your boy G, and I'm back with another video. I hope y'all enjoyed Thanksgiving. It was cool. Second one without my pop, so I had to cook up everything, and that junk was hitting. It was bussing. These fries are unequivocally f busted. You know what I'm saying? We took the food down at my mom's house. Yam juice spilt all in the back of the Kia. Damn! But we ate and it was good. So I hope y'all enjoyed eating with your family, spending time with your family, and it's over. It's back to the regular schedule program. So today, I wanna take y'all on a history lesson. You remember those timelines in history that had like everything on it? I'm gonna give y'all one of those. It's a legit little story time. Before I jump into it, if you're not part of the Good Vibe Nation, subscribe on up, hit that like button, join the family. You know, we making moves, we growing, we doing our thing. So y'all come, join the family, hit the cookout, get you a plate, bring a dish, <laughs> and join the family. This video was really just gonna give y'all some like background to me and wifey and our family. I mean, we're not super, super open. I mean, we, you know, talk about certain things and let people in pretty much as much as we want to. So this is gonna kind of provide a little bit of context. So starting up on the timeline, 2012, I meet Aries. She was graduating. We met like January, 2012. She graduated May, 2012. We moved in together in August of 2012. We live with my dad for five years, right? And it was because jobs were sketchy, y'all. Sketchy. I was still in school. I graduated a year later in 2013, but when Aries graduated, she was trying to get a job and she couldn't get a job. I would come home from school and Aries would be in the bed like this. Y'all, I legit felt like she was gonna go crazy. Cause she's just like, I got my degree and I can't get a job. So we weren't financially able to live on our own for like the first five years of our relationship. So God bless my dad, God rest his soul. He let us live with him for five years, y'all. And during that time, we were working little bogus jobs and we saved our money. I worked at some little lame jobs, making like $16 an hour with the masters. Aries was making probably like $13 an hour. And the economy wasn't as messed up, but we still couldn't afford to live alone. So fast forward, 2017, Aries just has Brave. We're about to buy our house. We're both working. I had got a good job. I mean, I was still only making like 35 k Aries was making, Aries actually got a raise. So we were close to making like 80,000. First time we we're actually making good money, right? We move into our house. We live for like six months to a year. Everything is cool, but I mean, y'all know how it is. I mean, y'all work, you know, living check to check. We got one car, can't afford two cars. Struggle fest, always I'm asking my dad to borrow money to grocery shop sometimes. Aries' mom is looking out for us. Just. I guess the typical life of a middle-class American. So Aries gets pregnant in January of 2018 with Wish. And then her job goes away. So I got another raise. So I'm making like 15K more than what I was making before, but we gotta like survive off of one income. So yet again, dad, here go $100, go get you some groceries, 150, Aries' mom, buying the girls clothes, my mom doing stuff, you know, it takes a village. So fast forward, Aries stays off work for like a whole year and she gets a part-time job. I get another raise, like 15K more. Cause I was like the golden boy at my job. Like they loved me. They were like, you're like the prototype of what this position is supposed to be, how it's supposed to be ran. We love you, everything about you. We just love you, you're, you're the golden boy. You're our go-to. Everybody loved me. They referred to me as the glue that kept everything together. Since 2020, everything just kinda been a little weird, right? Aries was still working part-time. I'm still making the good money at my job. My dad gets sick. And then last year, y'all is when it just seems like
I'm looking through the deck of cards and life just started dealing me a bad hand, right? My dad gets sick out of nowhere. I get this ear situation to where like I'm losing hearing in my right ear. They don't know what it is. Then just out of nowhere, my dad's sickness progresses to death. I start having these crazy vomiting situations. The ear just goes back haywire after it had like went down a little bit, but I think all the stress I was going through from my dad's situation just took me over the deep end and I was just like mentally exhausted frustrated, sad, hurt, heartbroken, anything you could think of, that's what I was. After my pops dies, I take off a couple of weeks from the job where I was the golden boy. And I come back and I'm letting them know about this situation. And y'all, seriously, you could go Google it. Go look it up, Meniere's disease. It's whack, man. People on YouTube talking about how they had to stop working just because you can't pinpoint when an episode is gonna come back and hit you. It's sporadic, it happens out of nowhere. It's not like it's like like you make it come on, you could be stressed. It, it, anything could make an episode happen. I kind of was unable to do certain aspects of my job. Like I couldn't go places uh, because I couldn't really drive. I was dizzy all the time, just not, just feeling faint, you know, like equilibrium off. Just all messed up. The job just started switching on me, y'all. Like, just started treating me like I hadn't done good work for them for five plus years. Typical of a job. <laughs> you know, they act like they love you until you do something that is against what they want you to do and then they toss you to the wolves. I put in for vacation to get some downtime around Christmas because what I did was education, worked with kids, kids were going on Christmas break. I was like, okay, this is a perfect time for me to really reset. I feel like I kind of rushed back to work a little bit after my pops died. I didn't want to leave them hanging just because of the nature of my job. I would get too far behind I, and I didn't want that. And I worked hard for them, you know what I'm saying? So I came back probably after like two weeks, which is not enough time after you lose a parent. So I'm like, okay, around Christmas, I'll reset. I'll be able to like get my bearings back and then go back to work refreshed in January. And hopefully I'll be able to, you know, perform. Like my sickness will probably have resided and I'll be, I'll be okay. So like everything came to a head at that time. And I got into like this big spat with my bosses at that job. And I was just like, you know what? I feel super disrespected. I don't feel valued. Not that they owe me anything because no job owes you anything, but I do believe that if you have a good worker who has worked hard for you and done every single thing that you asked for over the course of their tenure at the job, you're supposed to show that person a little bit of grace when they're going through something as life-changing as I was going through, losing my dad, and this disease that like completely flipped my whole life upside down. So they didn't show me that. And I'm just the type of person where if you mess with me, if you burn me, it's over with. I can't, I can't rock with you. I can't rock with you. So like the job wasn't great the whole time I was there, but I stayed because they took care of me. But I was finally to the point to where I'm like, okay, look, I'm about to look for another job. So at this same time, my sister has this great opportunity and Aries has this great opportunity. And I could just remember our family just being so deep in prayer, like God, you know, open doors. If this is your will, make these opportunities happen, make it come to pass. Everything is on you. Like if you have it for us, make it happen. So it's not us. It's not like, hey, we're trying to do. I knew I wanted to leave, but I was only leaving if it was God's will for me to leave. If I put myself in the right position and then he opened the door for me. If he closed the door, I would have knew that it wasn't time for me to go. So I just remember during that time, I kept singing, it ain't over, like it ain't over until God says it's done. So I applied for a job with this vendor that I used through the grant that I used to work for. And the vendor was cool, it was like a mentoring company. I kicked it with the, I kicked it with a lot of the people who worked there, the CEO, like I went out to lunch with him multiple times. 
Aries and I went out to lunch with him and his wife. Just a, just a bunch of stuff, right? So they end up hiring me. Aries gets her job. Kristen gets her job. Kristen is my sister. So I'm just like, man, God is amazing. You know, like he opened up all these doors. We're all leveling up at the beginning of 2022. It's going to be a good year. And just to give you a little bit more context, Aries and I have always been in situations throughout the course of our relationship to where we're not, I don't want to make it seem like we were broke or just struggling, but I mean, we couldn't really save. Every time we might get a little bit of savings, we got to go into it because we're not making enough money over here. You know how they used to say you got to rob Peter to pay Paul? It was kind of that same situation. You got to penny pinch out your savings just to go over here and grocery shop or go to BJ's to get toilet paper, napkins, all that other stuff. You can never amass your savings because you got to keep taking out of it to survive right so when she got her job at the beginning of this year and i got my job i'm just like dang like i just remember being so filled up with like emotions and like thankfulness to god like you really answered prayer we're in a position to where we don't have to depend on my dad, who was gone anyway, her mother, like I can go to the BJ's and spend 150 and not have to pull the 150 out of my savings. Like we were making enough money to do it. My dad passed, he left me a car. We finally had two cars for the first time in our whole relationship. So things were looking up. I'm like, we got money in the bank. We're finally gonna be able to do some traveling. You know, just live a little and not have to be stressed out about money and how to pay this and how to do this and how to do that. So I get the job and I start working and I was pretty much lied to y'all. It was like, I was told that I was gonna be one thing. And then when I got there, I signed, they told me I was gonna be doing something else. It just wasn't peaceful from the beginning. Like I just remember feeling hurt lied to like it wasn't gonna work out i didn't know how long i was gonna make it in that position just because of the nature of how they told me they told me i was gonna be doing one thing and then it was like okay well you're gonna be doing that but that's just a small aspect of what you're gonna be doing this is really what you're gonna be doing this is ridiculous man ridiculous it's just disappointing because after five months they came back and they're just like, you know, what we intended for you to be doing isn't ready on our end. So we have to dissolve your position and lay you off. So naturally, I'm pissed because I'm an analytical thinker, y'all. Like I dissect every single thing. It's so crazy. Sometimes it's a gift, sometimes it's a curse. But in that moment, I'm thinking to myself like, man, these people had to know that what they signed me up for wasn't ready for mass consumption. It wasn't ready to be dished out to the population. It wasn't ready. And I was telling them that it wasn't ready when I worked there, but they were trying to make it seem like, yo, you don't believe in the vision. You got to believe, you got to believe. But it wasn't that I didn't believe. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. It's not ready. So after all of the fake relationships the love that I thought that they had for me, the value that I thought they seen in me, all of that was zero. It didn't exist, right? And they just let me go. And then they told me, you know, we know you're great. We know you'll hit the ground running. We wish you the best, right? So, again, I'm looking at the deck of cards. Like, what type of hand is life dealing me, right? It's the first time in my life I've ever been in a situation to where I have as much as I have. I have a house. Well, first, I have a wife. I have two daughters, which y'all know. I got a house. I got cars. I got responsibility, just like every single one of you out there in the world. We all have responsibilities. So when a job lays us off, it could be devastating, especially if you're not able to get a job quickly. 
And you would think just how hard I've worked over the course of the last 10 years, because y'all seriously, I was, I, was, I was a troubled youth. Like I got in trouble a lot. I got arrested a lot. I quit jobs a lot. My work history is really, really checkered. It's, it's not great. It's not impeccable. It's just like, yo, this dude was problematic. And I admit that. And I was able to identify my problems and change my life. And I kind of just, just keep my head down. You know what I'm saying? I just keep my head down. I don't say much. I do what people ask me to do just because I have so much invested in banking on income and like providing for my family, right? Which again, a lot of you out there are in the same situation. So when they came to me to lay me off, I didn't even say anything. Like it was a meeting. I didn't even say anything at all. And I was infuriated. Right? I wanted to like switch back into OG and be like, yo, you people is fing crazy. How you just gonna do me like this? Like, this is crazy. You told me I had a year that my position will be reevaluated in a year. You came to me seven months before that. Like, at least give me an opportunity to look for another job before you just tell me it's over. You know, it's just like, it just was a messed up situation and I didn't say anything. So I think. Fast forward to now, this happened in June, I'm still angry because I wasn't able to like get it off of my chest. And like, I think my anger is magnified by the fact that I'm looking at my bank account and my money is dwindling out here trying to survive because y'all know unemployment don't pay you like that. I don't have another job. and. I'm, I'm surviving, so I'm watching money dwindle. Another instance of me <laughs> looking at the cards like, what is really going on in life, right? So I've been, like mentally, I've been kind of in and out, y'all. It's like, I'm trying to think of how to explain it. Like I've been really, reading my Bible and praying and just really trying to trust God and believe that, you know, God, I was removed from that situation for a specific reason because God has, God has something better for me, right? And everybody around me who I love has been telling me that. And it, it, it seems like it's confirmation, right? Um, friends i hooked up with some of my friends over on my birthday weekend and they're just like gee you're such a great dude man and you just got so much going for you like god has something better for you my mom same thing man god got you son like he's not gonna let anything bad happen he got you just trust him don't worry and i just want to say that that's easier said than done. Like I fully, I do trust God, but like every now and then I just have moments y'all to where I feel like I just want to cry. Sometimes I feel like I want to beat the hell out of somebody. Cause I'm just like, I didn't really do anything to put myself in this situation. Like I really think that though the people who just let me go, they could have just let me be. And even though it was contentious at my old job, like I wasn't at risk of getting fired or anything. They needed me, I would have still had that job. It probably would have been ugly and I would have had to work through some dysfunction, but I would have still been getting a paycheck. You know what I'm saying? But they chose to hire me knowing that their situation over there was jacked up and then just lay me off and now I'm not getting no money. So it's just like, I feel furious, but I try to suppress those feelings because it's not Christ-like and I don't want to get too caught up in the negative to where I can't see the positive. Like the positive is my lights are still on, there's still food in my refrigerator, I haven't lost anything. But then in the back of my mind, I'm just like, damn, what if I do lose something? Like my money is getting so low, like what happens when the money is all the way gone and I don't have any more money? Like, is it gonna get to that point? Am I gonna am I gonna lose all my money before something happens? Will I get a job? Will I get a sponsorship? Will, like what I can't see what's gonna happen, so I'm in like a state of unknown and 
every now and then I drift and I get scared and I get nervous and I talk to God and I'm just like, God, just bring me back, remind me, reassure me that you're here with me. You're walking with me. You've already walked through what I'm going through. You're ahead of me. Like you already seen what's going to happen. So I just have to continue to trust you and put my faith in you that you're not going to like forsake me or just leave me to like drown or reduce me down to, to nothing. It's hard, y'all. I ain't even going to lie. Like I'm not I didn't come on here for a pity party or nothing like that. Um, I don't want anybody to be thinking, oh, my God, you know, he's playing on our emotions or nothing like that. I'm just trying to give y'all an update because a lot of times y'all see me on social media, I'm smiling, you know, I'm showing this this one side. You see this one side, but then it's just like, it's a square. <laughs> there's a top, there's another side, and then there's a whole other bottom. So you're just seeing this one side of the square. And it may look pretty on the surface, but, and I'm not saying it's bad, but my thoughts are kinda like, all over the place. I had a conversation with Aries this morning and my wife is, she's so great. Like she sent me some Bible verses and sent me this article about just completely trusting God and believing in him and he's, he'll continue to reveal himself to you. But it's, it's, it's tough right now, especially as a man, you know, my goal as a man is to be a provider and to provide for my family. And I've been doing that greatly for the last 10 plus years and for that to have been taken from me it's kind of like I keep going back in my mind wondering like if I was too emotional when the the, the the golden boy job situation soured on me should I have stayed or did I move too quickly and trying to seek another situation and is that why I'm kind of like being punished it's just like so many questions going through my head at this current juncture in my life that I, I, I have to like dial back and like the only thing that literally has sustained me during this time is like my family, is God and my family. Because every time I get in those places, I just talk to God like, God, please just, you know, commandeer my mind, take over my mind <laughs> and like take those thoughts away. I don't want to think negative. I don't want to feel like down Debbie Downer like sulking like oh my god I can't believe this happened because what is that gonna do other than like put you in a worse place than what you're already in right so I try to constantly stay in the positive and just speak positive affirmations and uplift myself through my family through reading the Bible and just through tapping into God so yeah I mean long story short which I don't know if that even makes sense now because that just seemed like a long story, but that's kind of the history, man. Like we've been we've been really just trying to get to a place to where we are financially stable, you know, and I I think this last this last situation with this job just kind of let me know that you can't depend on a job. You have to be grounded in your faith and I think that it doesn't hurt to have multiple streams of income really make sense to where, you know, something like job loss can't just put like a, a wrench in your whole operation and just like throw you off of your whole entire game because I feel like that's what happened to me, you know? I'm like, where's where's it coming from, Lord? Where what it what what's next? What's gonna happen? So um Good Vibe Nation, I know y'all love us out there. I know y'all love me. I know you love my family. I would just ask in this time that y'all just uplift just the Kirks in prayer. I don't need anything from anybody other than your prayers and just positivity. Like, if God is speaking through you, drop it down in them comments. Gee, you going to be all right. I believe that God is going to do this or he's going to do that or he's going to do this or he's going to show himself and reveal himself this way. That's what I need. I love y'all. And y'all, Vlogmas is like a week away. And we're coming with it. It's going to be dope.
<laughs> Hopefully everything goes as planned and that we're able to deliver some great videos to y'all. So y'all be on the lookout for that. You know I'm dropping shorts all the time. If you don't follow us on TikTok, follow us on TikTok, Just The Kirks. Follow us on Instagram, y'all. I'm trying to get my Instagram up. We got like 4,000 followers on Instagram. I need more over there so that I can be eligible for some sponsorships. So if y'all don't follow us on Instagram, go follow us over there. Just the Kirks. We just the Kirks on all social media. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and here on YouTube. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe for the good vibe. And I love y'all. And I'll see y'all on the next video. We are a part of the Good Vibe Nation.